Oh. All right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. You guys have to get yeah. You're going to have to go without. And we'll begin with a. Is this something I did? Allegiance. Probably. Pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to do a normal selectmen's meeting here uh, to start, but we do have public hearings that have been posted at 7 o'clock, so we're going to need to <clears throat> to sort of take an intermission for this meeting to do the public hearings that's scheduled, but we're going to try to fly through some of these agenda items. So uh, we just came out of a non-public session, so do we Mr. have Mr. Chairman, any? I'd like to make a motion. I move that we seal the minutes of the non-public meeting until such time as majority of the board feels that it is wise and prudent to unseal them. There is second. A second. Seconded by Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 How about the minutes? Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion that we uh, adopt the mi minutes in public and non-public dated January 2nd, 2018. As written. As written? Do you yes. Okay. yes. Seconded by Bob. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. <coughs> Sorry, I thought he asked, said he was seconding it. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we approve the public and non-public minutes dated January 9th, 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. New fire rescue station project update. Good evening, Mike Pavero, Eastern Seaboard, construction manager for the Newton Fire Station. Um, things are progressing. I think everybody's seen the photos online or wherever they are, may be shown. Um, this week, we're putting the doors in, so by the end of this week, we should have a weather tight structure. Uh, we've started the interior petitions and fit up for the inside. Uh, we started at the end of last week, so. It, it's moving along. Excellent. And the weather won't affect us too much in another week because it will be weather tight so we can keep uh, progressing. So the um, <coughs> replacement side. So off and replaced. All done. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's done. Um, I know everybody's in a busy schedule here tonight. Um, I have Dennis Sweez uh, yeah, Sweeney from um, First Access Technology. Um, I'd like to have him come to the podium and explain to you briefly, five minutes or less, um, where we're building a new fire station. Phone, internet, all of that stuff is key, as we all know, in this day and age. And um, he'll explain to you that we should network all the buildings together. And it would be a uh, savings to the town to do that, cost savings to the town. But Dennis can explain it to you. doing? Hi, my name is Dennis Sweeney. I am, uh, I work for First Access Technologies. My um, company is in Salem, New Hampshire, 6 Megan Circle. And I have a couple of uh, items I want to distribute. And you can not necessarily pay attention to the brand because this is no, this is common throughout the technology of voice over IP. It's just that some companies do it different than others. Um, I wanted to mention that the fire station right now, um, and by the way, the first page is a picture of the police station. And if you look at this, it's not complete at this time of this picture, but that wiring can support both voice and data. So I'll wait till it gets around, but I wanted you to at least see it's on a data rack. Um, Chief Jewett, when he was an, an officer, helped build that. Um, it is pretty much state-of-the-art as far as wiring is concerned and my objective is to tie this in to the fire station as one and it's not that difficult to do. You're about 250 feet away from the fire station to the police station and I don't know exactly where this particular room is in in, de in distance, but if there was a conduit between the two locations, between the fire department and the police department, you could share one internet. So that's really nice. 
The second thing is that the phone system that you have can grow up to 2,000 extensions. Um, you can easily add on the police department as part of the fire department's phone system. So that means it's one point of management. Um, you have the battery backup. You might have, I don't know if there's a generator uh, proposed, but you have a lot of wonderful things that you can do. You're sharing the internet. You're sharing the, the you can intercom between the both locations. You can page between both locations. I can actually be in the fire department's telephone, look at the phone and see that off, uh, Chief Jewett is on his phone. I can also, if I tie this in one more step to the last page, you can look at, instead of having three silos, that's what I showed on page two, there's three silos working here, three separate entities, they're not connected together. The very last page shows it as they are all connected together. We call it a small community network. And I could be at the uh, town hall, I can say, um, um, Chief, Chief John is on his, his phone right now. Can I send you to his voicemail? Or can I, you know, so you can actually see status even though they're a couple miles away. Um, there are different ways of doing it. The simple way, if you're not familiar with the technology, is something called a VPN, Virtual Private Network. I don't want to go too heavy with technology, but it means that they have a tunnel, think of it as a tunnel that's private, and you own it, and nobody can hack into it, I hope. I mean, nothing's totally impervious to that, but it allows us to have the town and the fire police tied together. Then the thing that I was, when I talked with the town about the situation here, was that the wiring here is very old. And I say that, not very, it's, it's old, let's call it very old. We don't need to change the wiring here because the, if we have a phone system here that's a hybrid, hybrid meaning it can handle IT or IP phones or it can handle <coughs> traditional digital phones. So um, you don't have to change the wiring. So the cost savings is phenomenal. When you talk over the internet, I happen to use this brand over here, Appia, and um, if you happen to talk over the internet, you can see that it comes with a certain type of bundle. There's a certain minimum um, amount of minutes that comes with a bundle. But one of the interesting things is that all the incoming calls are free. So if you make a lot of outgoing, outgoing, outgoing calls, there is a certain amount of minutes that are covered. But anything above those minutes is 1.5 cents a minute. And I know in talking with billing and so forth, 1.5 cents a minute is substantially lower than what you're paying now with your current carrier. Can you still do the same things that your current carrier does? Yes, you can. Does it have reverse 911? Yes, you can do that. It's a, it's a, it's a rule that has to be followed. Um, what about disaster recovery? Well, and in the internet world, if someone, or the, the no, traditional telecom line world, someone hits a telephone pole, I lose my internet, I lose my, uh, my coax fiber, I might lose my telephone lines, the telephone lines are the lowest part on the telephone pole. What I propose is something called an, um, a cellular telephone backup. It's, uh, you have to be 4G. So if this town has a cell tower that has 4G and you can connect to it, you can communicate over that, both inbound and outbound. Let's say that is down. That doesn't work. We have a major disaster. This company has a built-in, and it's right down the bot in the middle of the page, it says automated attendant for failover. So I create in advance an automated menu, and I say, um, okay, you have to call Larry. And I get, there's no, no internet. Everything's down. The cloud picks up the call. The automated menu says, to reach Larry, press one to reach, um, you know, Diane Press 2 in whatever selections you want. You can drill down as many times as you'd like to get the police chief press 4, whatever it might be. And that's always in the cloud ready to go in the event that the backups are down. So just to give you on a high level, I didn't want you to be afraid of the internet. I was several years ago, 
and I was uh, leery of it, if you want to call it that. Um, I have come to the point where the quality of the phone call is superior to traditional phone lines, as it was not in the past, but it's superior. <clears throat> um, I have several clients within the next town over. You can certainly give them a call, talk to the people that run the show location. One of them has a 24 hour, seven days a week, 30, 365 a day operation, and they are using internet services. So I, I to talk to talk over. So uh, you're welcome to utilize them and discuss with them the situations that they have. I'm working with um, uh, your administrative assistant in uh, looking at seeing how we can save some money in the town. It's important to me when I work with the police chief, um, Streeter in the past, I did whatever I could to donate if I could. I'm willing to do the same thing. It just happened to be extra inventory, extra stock. No need for me to hold on to it. I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to help out Newton. Small town, great little community. Maybe I'll retire here someday. Who knows? <laughs> but um, I, I did want to let you know uh, this is a high level discussion. Um, fiber is inexpensive. You might say, wow, fiber, expensive. It's about the diameter of a pencil with the jacket. If I use indoor outdoor fiber, it's still protected. Um, we're talking in the range of $2 a foot. And that's a range, that's a general number. 250 feet between the two buildings, you know, you're looking about $500. Just a general idea. And any, any questions at this point? I, th I think the, the most important question is, it sounds like we need more information, but, but Mike, since we have a construction project going on, does that create <coughs> any sort of a kind of a barrier we have to make a decision by this point because of the construction or is there anything well, well there will be not for the fit up of the building itself yeah but the access from the building in, in inside the electric room mm -hmm. how we're going to fit that up to, to connect yeah. it to the outside world. yeah if you want to collect connect to the outside world one way you can do it is through the police station mm -hmm. and then go to the outside world or you can have their own path directly to the outside world I don't know the cost difference of those two, but I suspect that there is something involved in having a trench dug all the way to the street or having something dug just to the police station yeah. and connecting there. Well, he has to, uh, you have to hook up something either way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's the phone guy no matter absolutely. what. Absolutely. Right. I'm just, I'm just thinking in terms if, if we, if we're just talking the new fire rescue station or we're talking a change to the entire town, what kind of timeline we have here to make a decision to get all the, the facts and figures and we have to look at potentially other contracts that we have to worry right. about and stuff like that. And that's, that's the other thing, if you have a contract with another vendor, you have to m make sure that you don't pay any cancellation charges. Right. Those are the things that we have to look at. Um, it, it's, it's really up to you. I can try to turn it around as quick as you'd like me to turn something around. The thing is, when I kind of talk about high level, we can leave the town piece out of it for now and then bring it in later. It, this is a moving target. There's no particular, like, I have to do it now. Mm -hmm. well, why do I have to make it be, the police station's got the extension started with 100, the fire station starts with 200, and then the town starts with 300. Well, we can add the town on later. There's no reason to put it on immediately. But there's, there may be cost savings, that's the, that's the only thing. What type of an investment, I don't know at this point. So if we were to look at the calendar, and I think we're February 6th is the next meeting. Yeah. Is it doable, does it work for everybody? If we put you guys back on the agenda, you'd have some time to work with Diane and stuff. Sure, and we came back I think together. so. And we can kind of digest this as well. Yeah. So does that work? That works. That works. Yep. That works. That's a reasonable timeline. Awesome. Thank you. So we appreciate you coming down. Yep. So we'll we'll see you soon. And the timing, I think, works out pretty well for our public hearings. So okay, thank you. Thank you. Eastern Seaboard, any 
other uh, yeah, items? Other questions? Um, That's it. No. Okay. And you can go through Mike uh, if you have any questions. He's got uh, direct contact with me anytime, day or night, weekends, whatever. Okay, great. I'm looking at the clock. I see three minutes. So I'm looking at the agenda and I'm thinking job posting, can we do that in three minutes? Yeah, we can Letter D. Oh, all the way down there. Did yep. you review? Did everyone review the ad mm -hmm. for the transfer station manager? Everybody okay with it? Because mm -hmm. if so, I, I'm, yeah, I'm good, good with saying. How post. about a, a motion? Is that a motion? I would move to accept Fine. the transfer station manager ad and authorize the secretary to post it in the kit. One or two? Yeah. One or two locations. Two locations. Is there a second on Second. That? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So just so everybody's aware, Tom DeFalco, our transfer station manager, uh, has given his notice for March. I forget the date in March. 10th. The 10th of March. So uh, we have just voted to post for a new transfer station manager, and I'm sure sometime tomorrow that'll be on the website, and then it'll be in the papers shortly thereafter. So we appreciate everything Tom has done for the town, and we're glad that he's going to be around for a while longer. Uh, but we wish him g good luck when the time comes in his new adventures. So I'll probably we see also. Uh, we see mileage. one minute. Oh yeah, the mileage is good. So do call it. I'll make the motion. So item C, do we have any motions? This is for 2018 standard mileage rates. Federal Mr. rates have gone up. Mr. Chairman, I would move that at effective January 1st, 2018, Newton pay the national, the federal mileage rate of 54.5 cents per mile. Second. Do you have the previous? Uh, the, previous the previous one was 53.5 cents per mile. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I am now going to, uh, anybody have a motion to? I move to recess the public selectmen's meeting in favor of the uh, public hearings. Okay, second. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 So we are now going to take a couple of deep breaths <laughs> and move on to the next agenda item. <laughs> 